welcome back to the channel. We are in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and I'm the proud new owner of this 1967 Cadillac four-door. It's been sitting for, he says, 10 to 15 years, but did run when it was parked. So we'll start with a quick walk around tour, check out the inside and get her up on the new tilt deck, which uh, this is a perfect example of why I got rid of the last trailer, the gates on the back, because I think this one's going to be hanging off a scotch. We got the Gus man with us for a ride today too. We'll probably let him do his sniff checks on it. Oh, starting at the front, do a quick sweep around. I just love these stacked headlight Cadillacs. Can't say it enough. Uh, I mean, overall, I don't know if this has had body work done already, but um, I don't know, it's different color paint there, yeah, so it probably has. Uh, you can see the original paint under here, like a green rust hole right there. I feel like they all have a rust hole right there. Everyone I see, I don't know what's up with that. But uh, super low rider status with the flat tires. Hopefully those hold air. Oh, okay, let me see we get in there with something. Figured that just popped right up. Hopefully no dead bodies in it, right? Yeah, she's a little, uh, little rotted out. Ooh, that's uh, that's fiberglass. Uh, somebody had fiberglass resin doll up in there. Missing the skirt on this side. It's inside though. Okay. Got the corner wing windows, of course. Yeah, trim around the windshield missing. Hopefully this is. And still a little bit tight at the back. Last thing I need is these blowing out going down the road. I might have to throw a strap or something on that. Probably the reason it was parked right there. Rejected on the last New Jersey inspection. Let's see if Gus even wants to go in. What do you think, boy? You want to pop in there? Uh, I don't think he's a big fan. It smells kind of musty. <laughs> Says, nope, I'm good. And he's kind of venturing off too far, so I'm gonna have to wait in the truck in your sun patch. So, we've got a front seat that's not bolted down, no back seat, some spare parts. It smells like an old factory basement in here, no headliner. I don't smell any rat piss though, so that's nice. Uh, looks like a bunch of acorns, maybe some squirrels came in here, but I guess they kept things cleaner. A few open wires on this harness. These floors, yeah, these have definitely been redone. You can see they were all welded up here. Throttle works. Brake pedal uh, locked up without jamming it down anyway. And we have 77,239 miles. Rusted cluster. Got the automatic climate control all intact up here. Why is that Cadillac below down there? I don't something like slide down I'm not sure what happened presets the dueling ashtrays oh yes no cigarette butt in there either and actually you guys uh, told me there was a big dial on the last Cadillac and I thought that was something to do with the climate control but you guys told me that's actually uh, it was a cruise control so thanks for those comments uh, look at that we even have a key oh yes Glove box open. Oh, darn it. So, you know, that's where the nest was. It doesn't smell, though. They they have not been active in a very long time. It, it doesn't smell bad at all. It was the, the job they did on the floor. You know, not not the best, but hey, better than the last, uh, the last one, right? I love that this is a hard top, too, and these convertibles with no roof on them. You know, that's no fun. Anyway, that is the brief inside tour. I think let's go ahead and focus, and fill, fill the tires up, and, and load her up. Oh, come on. Mark of excellence. I wish it was that original paint color. Look at that. I'd be, oh, what am I talking about? It looks good black, too. Come on now. That's a good looking ride right there. Cruising in style. I was going to use our onboard ARB, but I'm remembering the last time I used it, I actually blew the hose out. This is probably a bad idea, putting a, a rubber hose so close to the outlet. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking, because I ran it for a long time, and that got so hot, and just blew it. So I have to get that on a list of things to fix. But that is no worry, because we've got the JF Eggwo. See if it's up to the task. 
doesn't look like she's budging much. Oh yeah, oh, it's leaking though. That's just a bead. How about one of the rears? That's all we need, 20 PSI. Oh, now of course leaking though. Well, on this tilt deck, one of the things I really like is when you're trying to back up somewhere tight with dual axle or worse yet, a triple axle trailer, the tires always scrub and it can be tough to get the trailer turning tight radius as easily. Uh, but on this, you just put it up a little bit and. I wouldn't do it when it's loaded, but when it's empty, it doesn't seem to be an issue. And then it brings the fronts off the ground, so you're backing up a regular two-tire trailer. Well, it turns it into a single-axle trailer, easier to back up. We'll see in the future if it bends anything. I, I don't think it will. Up to straighten that a little bit. Like a glove. Plenty of room to spare up on the front. And even with gates, those would fold up. So, chain this down now and hit the road. Good to go. You see some kind of groundhog or whatnot was living under there. Yep. Sweep the deck off so we don't dust everybody. And uh, yeah, the glass, I don't know, I think that's gonna be okay. I was poking on it with my hands. There's no problem. Now he's got a Apache truck under the cover. And take, oh, ho, ho, man. Hiding the, the butte, wow. Now you plan on uh, doing a paint job on this, I guess? Yeah, or? I'm gonna leave it bare metal. I coat it in oil. What what kind of oil do you use on it? Uh, Gibbs oil. Okay. Love it, man. That thing is sharp looking. Now, what what happened here? Was this just a whole section yeah, you so replaced? Yeah, it was a or? long bed, and then somebody converted it to a short bed. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> what year is it? Uh, 59 Apache. 59 Apache 31. So, what is that 31? Is it was it a uh, it's, yeah, it's like that 1500 model, basically. okay? Yeah. Is the original paint, oh, I guess, like a teal, or is, or is yeah. that or was that a repaint? Type of, no, I think that was the original, yeah. Nice. Oh, is this a 48 or a 53? It's a 53, yep, out of like a Tahoe. Sweet, man. Nice. That's, that's it's a popular upgrade. I mean, yeah, cost yeah. effective, reliable. That's it. Yeah, that, that's a cool cruiser, man. Love it. You take it out to car shows and stuff, yeah, much? Yeah, local stuff, you know, can't drive it too far. <laughs> yeah. Very cool, dude. And then you got the old Bronco. Yeah. Well, that's that just your trail rig, or? Yeah, that's trail rig, street legal, but it's got a 4BT in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Sweet, man. You got good taste. Yeah. The torque of the Cummins, man, you can't trail beat it. Rig, yeah. Yes. Dude, you ever want to sell this? Keep me in mind. I, oh I've been looking for a 4 <laughs> BT rig for a while. I've had this thing for like 10 years already. Really? I bought it right out of high school. What oh, trans in it? Right unseen. It's uh, NP435. Okay, nice. It's still got like a Dana 20 trans model 3 or stuff like that. Yeah, really rust free frame, too. Yeah, it's not too that's, bad. That's beautiful, man. Oh, 
<laughs> this has got some serious vibration to it, but what a cool corner. I love it. New Jersey, one of the few states where you're not allowed to pump your own gas, but they, they usually don't care if you do. Every once in a while though, you get a guy who says, put it down right now, what are you doing? I guess we gotta take you running, huh? Don't we? are the best so we're back over here quite some time later to bring this on home and get it running i don't even remember where we left off i know we didn't get it running though i know that much To begin i'd say tires first since these are completely shot you got some 225 75 15s super rad uh yeah we we already tried airing them if i remember right and they were they were done for once this is coming off here oh well that's not good we'll just call that lucky that it didn't fall off going down the highway should i check that next time um uh, Oh yes, the fender. Luckily we got the removable fenders. We don't have to get in there anyway though, because this should have the hood pop here. Did not check under the hood, just kind of took the guy's word on everything. So here goes nothing. Maybe something. Uh, should have the 429 being a 67. Wish it was a 68 with the 472. Heck, if nothing else, have this motor as a spare for the airboat. Get ourselves a little bit of lube. Check this out on the garage door. I just put those little stoppers up on the end of the tracks. Now, if you throw it up real hard, well, spring action. Since I had cut the tracks shorter, uh, what do we got? Yes, some glass here on that. Hood latch. Oh, just incredible weather today. 80 degrees. I know some of you guys might notice that ambulance sitting back there. It's a future video, possibly on the second channel. I'm not sure, but uh, kind of a fun auction buy thing. I don't want this thing. Look like somebody put an air horn on here. Or there we go. The hinges are a little tight, but they're moving. All right. Just a beautiful sight under here. Untouched factory air cleaner. Got some, some fluids. And still got oil on it too. No starting fluids. Let's see if we got anybody living on in here. You know what? I'll we'll blow this all off before doing that. Uh, relatively 
more recent master cylinder on there cap and rotor the plug wires look fairly fresh ac delco plugs cadillac doesn't seem like it's been pissing oil everywhere i mean again it hasn't been raining in a while so i'm sure those valve covers leak have a battery and check it for for voltage why not right <laughs> not gonna not gonna have any i'm sure maybe a couple oh we were under pressure there probably because the hot weather uh, here's a better look the corrosion's not too extensive and if we pan down fresh green coolant maybe eight nine inches oil dip sticker right here we are about an inch over full but it's super clean so you guys know a lot of time that can mean moisture gets into the crankcase although with this way this was sitting i highly doubt that i'm not gonna worry about it we probably just overfilled it a little bit transmission not running but uh we got fluid down below uh, definitely gonna need to top that off <clears throat> no moisture the oil fill belts are in usable condition the alternator third one in is the worst shape got the fan clutch very modern for uh 67 right coolant reservoir empty or overfill and power steering uh, not on the stick, but I, I see some fluid down there, so we're not bone dry. When I was reaching down here looking, I thought this might have been an air horn, but no, it actually looks factory. Uh, maybe. You guys would know better than me. It's got the two electric horns, and then this is electric, too. Cannot wait to hear how that sounds. Well, we got to get that working. Grab ourselves a multimeter. And, uh, no, garage is not set all up yet. It's, it's a long story on that one, but kind of taking the time, getting ready to put the final seal penetrating sealer on the floor and then be able to move stuff in but actually uh we we kind of been looking at some other properties too so I'm, I'm not like incredibly eager to get everything in there just to be like oh we're moving but the old building had to go i'm super happy we, we put this one up and yeah it's that's that'll be another video it'll be more on that probably on the, the second channel uh going over garage stuff we've actually got negative voltage on the battery look at that went down to zero and started going the other way Oh yeah, that's certainly sulfated and shot. I'm not even gonna bother trying to charge it. tried getting the nest up into there. It's a good thing for the, the steel screen over the filter, right? The worst is when the air cleaner's off, they make a nest right on top and all the piss corrodes and rusts everything solid. Oh yes, look at that carburetor. Plenty of action. Oh, it's that carburetor with a little PB. Let the lube trickle down. And uh, of course, it would be a good idea to pull the plugs lube the, the bores and hand rotate it over but you know since i bought this car cheap and not really too worried about it well, let's throw a battery on and listen to the crank what the heck right now hold up a second you guys just saw me shoot some pb blaster down the carburetor and call the lubricant and while it's not a lubricant it is an awesome penetrating fluid and my absolute favorite but they have many other products one of the others that I use all the time is their white lithium grease in a spray can. I find a lot of people are unsure about what white lithium grease is really used for because obviously it's not a high temp bearing grease. Think of it mostly as metal to metal contact. So you get your door hinges or wheels like this that have uh, you know metal to metal in there. You spray that up and essentially the lithium soap base is gonna help release the oils inside at a, uh, a slow rate. 
Now, otherwise, you're gonna end up with a squeaky wheel, keep rolling it, and then break it off. Now, you can also use it on garage door hinges. That is if you want them to last a very long time without getting squeaky. And the other benefit of it is the fact that since it has that thick base, you can spray it on a vertical surface and it's gonna stay there. Door pins, door latches, bike chains, the list goes on. So if you don't already have a can of white lithium grease in your garage, consider picking up a can of blaster. Back to the video. Let's give her a sniff. Where is the tank on this back here? Yes. Oh, that's bad. Tank's gotta come out. You know, sometimes they smell okay, and other times you just know that the, the tank's gotta get dropped. But look at that, the, uh, it's not so rusty. Neither of these front doors latch on here, but we're gonna have to pop this fender off to get that open. I see I got self tappers in there too. That broke right off. Okay, removable with a little persuasion. Stretch A. Alright, that's a little better. We did have a key in this too, right? Yeah. Yeah, I still got that old factory smell in here. These ain't cutting it. Just noticed a piece of metal sticking out of my tire. Huh, barely went in. Stole battery out of the ambulance. Should be good enough. And with that juiced up, let's see if we get lucky and just get a crank out of it. And park. Yeah, nothing. We are. I just wiggle around the shifter. Actually, it went into reverse and it started cranking. Yes, that's with the jump pack on there, but that's got a, a good crank. I hear the Gulu did not like too much though. Through a code three, these things always throw in different codes. Uh, the JF Eglo one I use, that, that's like tried and true. It's got the air compressor, and then the, you know, the only way to shut this off is to hold the power button forever. Not a big fan of all the tech in this one. I just want a jump battery that's gonna work when you hook it up, you know? There we go. I suppose we'll get this all vacuumed out too, cause you know, when it can't drain, it just rot out. It's all moist in there and it's been like 90 degrees the last few days and it's still sopping wet. Got some more evidence of rodents. Quite a bit of crud in this door. Rotted through on the back, but you know, you guys have seen worse. There's an original color again. Uh, I guess what would we call that? Like a, a sea foam green or something? If you guys know, let me know down below. We got all the original trim stuff for the doors. It's all corroded through though. And yeah, the uh, trunk. Oh, what the heck! Look at these guys. Wow, that's a big ant's nest in here. You can tell the, the moisture's been getting through. I got the, the bumper jack, or pieces of it anyway. Oh man, so many ants. No, they're running right away with their babies. They're like, oh, it's terrible. On the plus side, we do have four beautiful hubcaps in here. This quality stainless steel. What a rust bucket. I feel like I'm vacuuming half the car away. Ah, oh, poking holes in the floor. Look at that. And you know we're only skimming the surface. They got homes built throughout this whole thing. I mean, every crack and crevice like this. Uh, weather glue looked fine. You pulled up there underneath. Like uh, uh, this stuff's actually still really pliable for its for how old it is though. Well, there they are. This, these are the fastest ants I think I've ever seen. Why are there so many bumper jack attachments? Hey there. 
There's four different fingers, five, five of them. I got a little carried away there, but that really had to be done because we got rid of all that material holding the moisture and water in. Got rid of 90% of the ants. I still see them running around. Uh, and honestly, this trunk's not in the worst shape. It, yeah, it's a little rotted through in some areas and you know, body mounts. I mean, but this is still got metal there, rotted through all up in here and up top there, but uh, that's better. So we, we did keep all of this. I don't know what these rims are off of. If you guys know, let, let me know down below. But uh, the chrome is actually in really good shape. Looks like somebody might have elongated the holes for uh, to make it fit a different pattern. Maybe these came off a of Ford or something and they were trying to get them going a Chevy. I don't know. Good to go. Look at that, even latches. Well, back over here in the engine bay, let's again, we'll, we'll get this fuel line on the hooked and then check for spark, right? Got a jug of some two stroke mix fuel hooked up to the carb and I took, the, took off the line going to the inlet of the filter, got that running down to a jug and check for spark real quick. And key on, we got positive on the coil. Should have positive on the other side. We do, it means the windings are good. I'm sure the points will need to be cleaned off like usual, but we'll just uh, stretch this lead over and check for a pulsing ground on there. Oh, now you wanna help help me crank? Yeah. Okay, uh, you look nice. Oh, thanks, it's all I was bothering her before to, to crank it. She was busy. Okay, go ahead. No spark. So we will clean the points off now. All you right. did good. Thanks. That'll just all work. Great. Where are you running to? Getting bit. These points are probably uh, just a little cheesed up. Or, uh, Jen, go ahead and crank it. All right, we got good spark now. Now we'll do a final adjustment after we get it running. Our next step is gonna be turning the fuel on and watching a level up here. See if it drops, listen to it in the carburetor. Oh, it's flowing. So now we'll give her a little love tapping and make sure that the floats seal off. Bowl is filled up and now we got some steady trickle coming out of the main jet. I'm gonna, that means our float is not sealing completely. I'll shut the fuel off. Let's see if the pumper is working. It's not. But we got enough gas in there to start it. Yes, it probably needs a carburetor clean, but you know, more often than not with the, these automotive carbs, I mean, they seem to be fine when you let them sit. Unlike motorcycles, not the case. Clanky up top, but that's, that's no problem with turning fuel on. Definitely hitting all eight. That's what I'm talking about. That sounds like a healthy motor right there. Runs like a top. No smoke out of the tailpipe. Can't beat it. What is that? Oh, it's a vacuum noise. For the uh, climate control, probably. Now we're running for a few minutes. We got nothing coming from the fuel pump, which is good. It means maybe the tank is empty. 
Uh, I suppose I'll fire it up one more time and top off the trans fluid because I know that's that's low. And otherwise, I think we'll pop these wheels off and try to get some tires going. You know what? I might even have. What are you doing? Might even have uh, some 15s sitting under the deck. Yeah, they ain't the right size, but I got a few that might work. Took a gallon of ATF to get it just on the bottom of the stick. I'll have to get some more. The red, about a half gallon low, but I can see the cross flow coming through on the top. Uh, plenty of flow coming to the water pump. Power steering topped off. Let's get this idle turned down a touch. Upon rechecking our motor oil, yeah, we're still about an inch over full, but not milky, so that means there's no water in there. Oh yeah. That one's worse than it was before. I got it to latch, but now I can't get it to unlatch. I love this Cadillac. Are you gonna have a heart attack? Ack, 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 ack. Cadillac, <laughs> ack, 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 ack. She's a lovely old gal. Be on the road tomorrow. Yeah? Almost ready for a road Pretty trip. Pretty optimistic there, huh? Almost ready. Just needs this woman's touch. You're gonna do the interior tomorrow, right? Yeah. Clean that I'll all out. Bolt the seat down. Scrape off that rejected sticker. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, we gotta pop the windshield out too, too before we hit the road. Uh, these are a little, a little loose. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's fine. Safety glass. You tell that Dal. You tell her who's boss. I run this neighborhood. He works at Mr. Cacciatore's down on Sullivan, Sullivan Street. Street. Medical Center. Straight in any Chevy for Cadillac. You ought to know by now. Nicky can't drive with a broken back. It's not Nicky. At least you can polish the fenders. And it seems such a waste of time. Yeah, that's, that's what, what it's all, all about. about. Mama, Mama, if that's, that's moving up, then I'm moving, moving out. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Gus. Go get the ball. Go get the ball, boy. Go get the ball. I repeat, Mr. Gus, go get the ball. <laughs> it's so loud. Are we taking this to Home Depot? Know. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Next afternoon, we gotta get this rolling because I need the trailer for another job. And then I got a few leads on tires. I don't really want to put those little 195 60s or whatever they are that I have. We got anywhere from a 225 to 205s and if I could get a matching set of like 225, 70, 15s or something, I don't know. Send some emails. We'll see what we can get. I gotta say, these tilt deck trailers, they just make life so much easier. I'm not trying to drag a vehicle off. Let's see if she fires right up and moves under her own power. I don't know why I even try growing grass. But uh, funny, I couldn't get it to make much power. We uh, potato plugged the exhaust when we are backing up the trailer. Stuffed shut. Kind of bottomed her out a little bit, no damage, but. Just 
picked up four Wilson tires, 40 bucks. It's got this 97 F350. You, you said it's got 300,000 miles on it? 338,000. Wow, look at the interior of that. This thing is cherry. This absolute cherry F350. Boy, I don't know whose dumb idea it was to use asphalt, but... I mean, I know asphalt's supposed to take like a year before you really use jacks, but geez, that is so soft. About a three quarter inch dent. Oh, I should have spent the extra money on concrete. Oh well. Here we go, we got her jacked up proper. And these front wheels aren't not completely seized, just a little bit tight. Uh, I forgot if I showed you guys, I had left the engine hoist out here for a day and that divoted down so much too. I mean, it's, they say asphalt takes up to a year to fully cure. And, but even after that on a hot day, it's always going to be super soft. Like where I parked the trailer over here for just one day with the Cadillac, that back wheel was, I mean, that, that dipped in so much sitting there. So, kind of nice, honestly, because now I just, I just don't care about this driveway. I don't know. Like after they originally did this, I had a, there's a little patch job and a couple burr baths and I cared for like a week and then not to care. It was on my mind a little bit, like maybe we could fix it. And once you, you add some of your own little potholes in there, you just stop caring. That's kind of the nice thing about asphalt and it still looks good. So I'm just taking a quick glance underneath. You can see she's not too crusty for a 67 engine not leaking at all no drips trans that's definitely uh, seems to be where the majority of our leak was coming from torque converter uh shield or cover is missing oh wait no there's there's a massive leak coming down uh it looks like power steering boring let's get these dry rotted tires off get something drivable on there check out the brakes do what we can to do I did think about just throwing those Jeep wheels right on here, but uh, they got a different bolt pattern. These are uh, five by 4.75, the Jeep's five by 4.5. You got some newer brake lines in here. So somebody did a little work before it was parked. A mud dauber nest all up in here. Oh yes. Pretty decent shape on the shoes. The bonding still intact for the most part. And the wheel cylinders are actually, yeah, these were done. These ain't even leaking. I mean, right now they're not leaking. That doesn't mean as soon as you use them a couple times, pistons break loose and then they start leaking a bunch. But this, this is not bad. A little tight. Oh, kind of sucks this has drum brakes on the front. I don't think they came standard until uh, 69 on Cadillacs. And, but it, it does have the dual master cylinder, which is nice. There we go. It's got a rust patch in there. We'll leave them a touch loose for now. Lots of particles in there and it's really, it's like motor oil almost. Wow, yeah, so the drum got a bunch of grease on the inside of it because it's so light. This stuff is like, like motor oil in there. So it started flinging and dripping, you know, dripping down into the drum and soaked into the shoes a good amount. You can barely even see where the rivets are because it's all packed with brake dust and grease. However, the you know, wheel cylinders don't seem to be leaking. So we'll just rock them like that for now. And you know, it does have the grease seal, which is probably shot too, but I, I think this is just a great example of uh, why not to use regular grease. You gotta use that high temp wheel bearing grease because otherwise it'll melt and, and just uh, run down onto your brake shoes. Just kind of doing a preliminary inspection. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be revisiting that 
or it will be revisited at some point regardless i've heard uh, some guys say to put these drums in a like a bonfire to burn all the the oil out of them when they get brake fluid or grease soaked into them because you know you can clean that off with acetone all you want uh once it's soaked into the cast iron it's it's very hard to to get it out completely same deal over on the passenger side and grease just spewing out all over the place but otherwise uh, it will cylinders you're trickling a touch on this side broken down too and so I know you guys like the white walls out but these are kind of beat up uni royal Laredo's made in USA but we'll go uh, we'll go with the all black look and clean up the rims good enough we'll hit them with some uh, some bead sealer good to go clip is for people that used to say oh you work in such a sloppy shop well it's just when you work around people that leave things like this it's hard to you know clean up it's just like defeating mr gus just came running over he doesn't like anything that rolls you know it's so weird he, he just came and sniffed this honeybee gus what's that but he it's like he knows not to mess with them because they could possibly sting him. Any other insect, he'll he'll just eat it. <laughs> Honeybee? No. He'll bark you at it. Gus, what's he doing? What's that? Don't you do it. You're gonna regret that. You can sniff, but don't lick. Good boy. Oh, and as for these old Cherokee wheels, I just listed them on Marketplace for a hundred bucks. So who knows, maybe I'll, uh, I'll make 60 bucks off this whole deal. fit on here. No. Darn. Jeez. Didn't leave it in park, did I now? <sighs> Get ready to go for the big hill. Let's take a peek inside this master. I did pump the brakes when it was up in the air and uh, they do release. I didn't want to hit the pedal before I push it because uh, if the piston seized up, you end up with stuck brakes. We're uh, up to level with decent looking food, really.
On a positive note, the brakes work really good. Too good, actually. Uh, you can bump them, they pretty much lock up, lock it up because of the, the grime on there. But I'm sure that'll come back to life as we drive it. Uh, the, the bad part, though, is that they it's either on or off. You have to pull the pedal up. So I'll spray some lube on that tonight. And if not, it's probably just going to be that master cylinder. But we'll see if we can get the linkage lubricated up. Uh, let's see if these lights are working. Oh, that's right. I disconnected the light switch because it was smoking. Okay. Uh, so the lights don't work. How about the horn? Yeah, that doesn't work either. Was this locked and unlocked? Can you lock the steering wheel or something? Oh, whoa, look at that. That is awesome. Telescoping steering wheel. Super cool. Love it. So probably all sorts of features. I, I like how you can leave it unlocked too, if you choose to do so. Yeah, I sprayed everything I could inside this and cannot get, no matter what I do, get this latch to release. You know, that panel will have to come off or something going on. I keep, ah, oh, it's like worst sound ever. I keep going to close it. I just, for the rest of tonight, uh, I'm gonna pull all this out of here and then hit this floor with, you guys haven't heard of before, but uh, Ghost Shield, they make some awesome products for concrete floors. I'm gonna hit it with the Siloxa Tech 8510. I read amazing reviews on this and it was kind of pricey to pick up, but I'm hoping it does a good job at repelling the oil stains over time, or at least making them a little bit easier to, to wipe up. I already hit this with a densifier. All that will kind of be in a, the, I guess it'll be like the fourth or fifth video on this garage on the second channel. So yeah, I'm gonna clear this out tonight. Uh, but this is good. Do we have a running, driving, braking machine? We got to get the fuel tank dropped. Uh, some, not a battery in there because that one's completely shot. And I'll just shut that off since it sounds like it's ready to stall. <laughs> Pretend it wasn't about the stall. A few other things, and I think we'll be we'll be ready to go cruise down the road. You know, take it over to Trenton or down to Philly, and heck, maybe put a for sale sign on. See if we can make a little profit on this unit, or unless I fall in love with it, one or the other. I suppose since it's trash night, I'll get rid of some of this junk in here. What what else is there? We got some plug wires. I'll keep those. Oh, wheel cylinders. A little rusty in there, but these seem still good. More ants. And two of those wheel cylinders looked still decent, but some other new in package. And uh, the other water got to those. At least the seat's still in good shape. Put a cover on this. No mice got in it. Yeah, I'll give this a quick vacuum job. Vacuum the nest out of that glove box. And we'll, we'll call that a night. Now, next evening, and if I'm not mistaken, we're just about ready to test drive this sinister beauty. Uh, before we dive back into that, I did want to just show you guys this uh, ghost shield. How awesome. I was doing a couple water tests and it actually takes up to seven days to get full repellency for oil and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to wait before the oil, but check it out with the water. I mean, we'll just pour a little puddle and look at it beading it off like a waxed car. Here's some, uh, some regular concrete, you know, just soaks it right up. You know, dog pees on the floor or something, it wicks it right in, you end up with a stain, not with this. You can just sweep the water off. Of course, asphalt, well, fresh asphalt does too. Actually, that might have overspray on it. Yeah, see, that's soaking in a little bit more. I mean, totally off topic from this video, but I was just excited about it. Uh, you can see how much longer it takes for the water to dry though, since it's repelling. I, I poured this on so many hours ago and it still has water versus that side doesn't. But if we pour it across it too, you can see it completely beads it off on this side. I mean, look at that. And then over here, it soaks it right in and you can already see the crazing. And back over on the Cadillac, ac, 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 ac. We got the interior nice and fresh minty uh i guess we'll bolt down the seat and yes this door we got it we gotta fix that because i mean unless i zip tie things shut oh man you can see there was a mouse living in here the glove box other door probably just everywhere oh we got the door fixed on both sides fuel source 
fire extinguisher. Let's try to go for a ride. Guys, it's getting dark and we don't have lights. Here goes nothing. I probably should clean the windshield too, huh? Brakes feel good. I say not having a back window, kind of convenient. Oh, it's a skateboard holder hook. No. Here goes nothing. Ugh, so many noises. Come on, baby. Yes. She's alive. Oh man, let's try those brakes out. Okay, yeah, they're good. Sorry about the poor, poor quality camera here. Oh, let me adjust my mirror. We got the mechanical adjustability. It's no wonder these brake grease was melted so bad since they, they kind of stick unless you pull the pedal up manually. So I'm actually got two feet on the brake pedal. I don't know what that noise is in the back. It's bad though. We got some torque. That's just all the parts rattling around back there. That uh, should answer the question of will it run and drive? Uh, drive? You know, not really. I mean, it would if you had to, but if me and Jam were to be taking this cross country, we did a fly and drive in, it's gonna be full carburetor kit, brand new tires, all the wheel cylinders, shoes, drums, at least clean them up in boiling water. Gas tank's gotta come down, cleaned all out. Glass, you know, that's, I mean, it's just, Oh, what's up, baby? What are you doing? I'm out cruising the caddy. You ready to hit the road in this thing for Utah, Utah or what? Uh, it's running uh, pretty good. I mean, how are you making that on your uh, your concrete project? Oh, not good at all. No? No. Anyway, it sounds like Jen needs my help over at the house. She's working on a little concrete project and sounds like uh, she needs, needs a little bit of assistance. So that's gonna wrap things up on this part one, we'll call it. I'd love to do more with this. You know, is it worth it? No, guys, I mean, it's pretty rotted and pretty bad, but look at that. I mean, you can't buy that that rough styling. It's kind of funny, I'm shooting this outro, the uh, NJ Transit police rolled up over there too, but uh, he's, he's, you know, he's not bothering me. If somebody's interested in purchasing this, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my email's in the about section on the YouTube page. If it offers lucrative enough, lucrative enough, I would consider selling it as much as I'd love to hold on to it. I don't have a ton of property. So if you're interested in, in putting this old gem back on the road, let me know. If you're gonna do a demolition derby with it, you know, that, uh, I don't know. I'd not like to see it go down that road, but it needs a lot, needs a lot of parts. And yeah, you guys have seen, seen everything. And maybe it'd be good for a movie or something. I don't know, of course out in, Hollywood, they, they got plenty of rust-free vehicles. So before I run out of gas, I'm gonna cruise on home and yep, appreciate you guys tuning in like usual. No nonsense, no how, and hope to see you in another one very soon, or maybe in like two weeks or so. See you then. Oh, it's me again, I'm back. Forgot we don't have headlights. We ought to get this girl home. Uh, let's be straight, this engine and transmission, excellent condition, not blowing any smoke. Yeah, the carburetor is run, you know, making it run rough, but it's not, that's not engine damage. So I see the value right there. And then also the fact that, I mean, it's just super cool looking. Like, yeah, it's, it's beat up, it's rough, but she's a beaut. I don't build them like this no more, guys. What do you got there? Where'd you get that string? Oh. You're chewing mommy's bag. You're in trouble. Uh, it's, uh... I'm a little tangled here. Can somebody help me? <laughs> you were a bad boy. You were bad. You were bad. Yeah, you.